There we go. Well, let me say welcome to everybody on Facebook. We're so glad that you can join us. Thank you for everybody that's arriving now. Please come. Feel free to come grab a seat. There's some space there by the sound desk, some space here in front. Find a posse for yourself. Johnny, did you keep some space for you and Christy Lynn? Sorry, Christy Lynn. I'll sort him out next time that he'll have a reserved sign with flowers, everything, so you know exactly where you're supposed to sit. Okay. <laughs> All good, all good. Okay, come on, let's uh, stand to our feet. I'm going to pray for us, and we, uh, we know that God's going to move. It's going to be good this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Hey, why don't you just lift up your hands, just lift them up. This morning we are here for no other reason than to exalt the name of Jesus Christ, because He is worthy of all the praise. He is worthy of the highest honor. And I don't know with what agenda you came to church today, whether you came to check it out, whether you came fighting with your husband or your wife, or whether you came Velcroing your child to the wall. I don't care the reason you came, but I want you to change your heart's attitude right now and say, Jesus, you are my focus. Not my argument with my spouse, not my issues with my kids right now, Father, I lay everything aside so that I might see you, so that I might experience you, and so that your presence can flood this place. And say this with me. Say, we place a demand on heaven and the promises that God given to us by Jesus that we will receive the Holy Spirit in power with the accompaniment of signs and wonders. And say this with me. Say, God, this morning, increase my expectation to see your kingdom come, to see your will be done. Father, lastly, we give you permission to have your church. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You're the God that goes before me And who shall I fear? And who shall I fear? You're the God who slays the giants You're the God in mountains You're the God that splits the oceans You're the God Shall I fear and who shall I fear? Nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. Nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. Nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. Nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. Oh. You're the God who set the captives free. You're the God. That heals the sick, you're the God that opens blind eyes, you're the God 
Praising you with everything, nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. Oh, yeah, here for you. Oh, figure away. Get away, lies get away from me, death get away, death get away from me now. Be get away, be get away from me, lies get away, lies get away from me, death get away, death get away from me now. Be get away, be. Give life, life, abundant life, you 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 give life, life, abundant life. Stop me from praising you with everything. Nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. Nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. Nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. Nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. Nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. Nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. Nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. Nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. Nothing's gonna stop me from praising you with everything. You give life, life, abundant life. You give life, life, abundant life. You give life, life. Abundant life. You give life, life, 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 abundant life. You give life, life. Abundant life, you give life, life, abundant life. You're inviting us 
You're inviting us to step into a bonded life. You're inviting us. You're inviting us. You're inviting us to step into a bonded life. You're inviting us. You're Step into a bottom line. We want more. We want.
There's a place for you at the Father's table. tasted and I've seen But I can't lose my hunger It's not that you don't satisfy but My heart or of you tasted and I've seen it's my hunger it's not that you don't satisfy but my heart yearns for more of you But I fall into you. Yes, Jesus. But I fall into you. Yes, Jesus. 
You 
when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor. He gave him the name that's above every other name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Just tell them you look beautiful. <laughs> Just tell them, may God's face shine upon you. Yeah, come on. Now, now I'll tell your wife she looks beautiful. Now, I saw some of you. Now I'll tell your wife she looks beautiful. That's a good. Yeah, you look at the bar. Come on. Oh, and the Lord's face shone upon us this morning. I love that song Sean wrote. Isn't it such a beautiful song? Well, all the songs that we sang this morning were written by people in our church. And uh, it's so beautiful. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. It's amazing how we expect a preacher to prepare a message every week. But we don't expect the worship team prepare a song every week. Yeah. Come on, I want to sing songs birth within our church, birth within our community that carries the heartbeat of our community. And it's really, really precious. And so those songs were gloriously written by uh, the beautiful men on stage and Johnny. Come on, um, yeah, we're so blessed in this church. We've got beautiful musicians. 
that have devoted their time, their attention, and their infection, their infection, their affection to the Lord. And it's, uh, we're so thankful for them. So we're going to allow them to continue to prophesy on their instruments. And uh, Sean has it's got a, a big gig this week. He's flying down to Kimberley to go perform. So Sean, we love you. We bless you with a safe trip. He's got a run because he's going to prepare. He's so Thanks, we love you, bro. See you soon. See you on the airwaves. <laughs> love you, Sean. Has. So come on. He, he drives all the way from Durbanville with some of the other boys to just come and serve. Just come and love. And uh, yeah, we're so thankful for the beautiful, precious people in our church. So this morning, you're here for a very, very special time. Firstly, to exalt Jesus. Amen. Secondly, to recognize the calling and the mandate over Nick and Charlene into the fivefold ministry. This morning, we will only be confirming what heaven is already saying over them. That they have been called and set apart for the ministry of the gospel. Thank you, Lord. Into nations. And this morning, it is our privilege as pastors and as apostles and as fellow sons and daughters of God to come alongside of them and recognize what the Lord is doing in their lives and just confirm heaven. So it's very, very cool. Oh, look at them. So pretty. I'm sitting on side. That's very cool. Very good. It's gorgeous. And so, but before we do that, we're going to quickly do a couple of testimonies. Um, is there anybody that's got some testimonies of what the Lord has done? Come, come. Come, Debbie. Come, share. Or do one more. Anybody else? Raymond's got a testimony. I've got, I've got a testimony that uh, I want to share as well. And I, and I think I want to encourage you guys. Because a lot of times, we step out in faith and we don't always see results. That shouldn't discourage us. A couple of weeks ago, um, Denise, who oversees a women's shelter, asked us to go pray for a little boy who has who has been paralyzed uh, from the waist down. He went into the hospital. He was sick. He put a, they put a drip in his leg. And when he came out, he couldn't walk. So he's a three-year-old boy. So we went to go pray for him at the women's shelter. And uh, it was difficult because we're like, when you see a little boy dragging himself on his arms, your heart breaks. And you're like, Father, come, touch him, come. And you become so desperate to see the Lord touch him. We prayed for him and we didn't see lots of results. Maxine and Nick then continued to pray and minister to a few more of the women at the shelter. And then... Last week, uh, the lady, the mom of the boy, contacted Denise and said that he's trying to stand. The boy is trying to get up and stand. And so we've got the privilege of praying for him again. And and uh, we prayed for him, and it, we probably spent about an hour, Denise and Adrian and Nick and uh, Jason and Maxine and I, and we, and we prayed for him, and, and we were like, Father, we're trusting the Lord to see God break through. And... Uh, and we saw probably, I would say for me, I saw a 30% improvement at least from the last time that I saw him. At one stage, we put little shoes on him, Sarah's shoes that light up, and he started stomping his legs to get the lights to go off. And I want to say to you, even that should be celebrated. Because God wants us to persevere. And God wants us to break through. If you see a diamond while you're digging and you see the tip of that diamond, you're not going to stop, right? You're not going to stop and say, oh, no, I can't get to the diamond. What are you going to do? You're going to persevere and you're going to break through. And God is not calling us as a church to way back because we didn't see the results. God is asking us to dig deeper. God is asking us to have greater faith. God is asking us to set aside our man-made ideas of what it should look like and to seek the face of Jesus. And we trust God for that boy's healing. And that boy's salvation and that family's deliverance. And so why don't we as why don't we ask Denise and Adrian to stand as proxy for them? Why don't you guys stand in the gap for them? And we're gonna pray for them again sure. this morning. We're gonna release the healing power of Jesus. So Father, we thank you as uh, Denise and Adrian stand in the gap for this boy. Lord, right now in Jesus' mighty name, we declare healing over him. 
Father, you said in your word that the lame will walk, the blind will see, God, the mute will speak, the lepers will be cleansed. And Father, this morning, we thank you for a healing over that voice, body, God. Strength to come into his legs, God. Strength to come into his spine. And we pass every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of lameness, God. And Lord, we command, God, the power of Jesus Christ to flood his body right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. So we're so looking forward for Denise and Adrian to testify. Wholeness. Amen. I want to encourage you, church, don't give up. Don't give up to pray for someone. Never give up. Their healing could be your next prayer way. Come on. And so, uh, Raymond, come share with us what the Lord's been doing. Thanks, Gary. Just uh, this morning, I want to thank the Lord. And uh, I want to encourage you as well. Uh, talking about persevering also, I want to mention that. So it's about my business and uh, I, I run a, a jewelry business and I've been trying for two years to get a location in Simon's Town. I did get a, um, a shop last year uh, towards the end of the year but it wasn't the ideal place but I wasn't looking for a big place or I wasn't looking it was too expensive but it, it kind of dragged on for quite a while and I just started and then the whole lockdown situation happened yeah, so I could eventually open on the 4th of July. But all the time I've been having this burden, it's it's not there yet. It's not it's not there where I want to be in that car. I, I, I want it to be on the main road, right there, visible. And many of my customers have been telling me, you know, it's a bit, you're struggling find it, it's a bit up the side road, that kind of thing. And um, I've had this burden in my heart, and sometimes I'm just going to walk up and down the road and just pray and ask God, God, please, I want to stay here. And then I noticed the spot that there wasn't much happening and then I went to inquire and then I found out that there was a lady that was actually taking it and I'm like, okay, God, it's, it's fine. I trust you. I trust you for the right time and the right place. Then two weeks after that, I saw nothing was happening there. So I actually just went and I asked again and I found the owner and she said, she doesn't know, like, there's something with these people that they've got some uh, difficult circumstances, something's, had, something's up. She will contact them and get back to me. So I'm like, okay, it's fine, you know. And then she sent a message and she told me, no, um, it, it doesn't look like it, those people are going to, uh, it's going to work out for them. And if I want the place, it's available for me. So then I was just like, oh, thank you, God. And I was just like celebrating. Then the other thing was I had to speak to my, my current landlord because you know what it's like to try and uh, get out of a lease. And, um, yeah, so I was just praying over that whole weekend. I said, I'm going to pray over this weekend. And, um, yeah, so I actually got to speak to him on, only on the Tuesday. It was um, uh, this, this uh, last uh, week ago. And he was actually just completely fine with it, you know. And he said, no, it's fine. I understand. We're all trying to survive in these times. And it's, if, if you go, it's fine. I will just give you a month's notice. I'm just like... You know, and I was just thanking God because He put the other tear that way, then He opened this way for me. And um, and I just want to encourage you also because persevere, persevere what you're trusting God for because He will make a way for you. I wouldn't have known, no, none of us have expected the whole lockdown situation, and I'm glad it didn't happen before then because it would just complicate stuff, you know, and now is the right time. And the other thing I wanted to mention to you is prayer. You know, we've been praying here in the mornings. And I want to encourage you to try and come to the prayer. You know, we aren't praying here for things to happen in our life. We're just praying here, seeking Jesus. We just need to glorify Him. But I tell you, things will shift in your life. I mean, you can't keep doing things the same way. Try doing something else for a change. Try doing something that you normally wouldn't do. You know, dig in deep. Just, just do something uh, unconventional. Come and pray, you know, just see what God does. Trust me. Be clear. I'm promising you. Yeah. Come on. That's a good interlude into our prayer. We pray uh, Wednesdays to Fridays here yeah, in the building from 5 to 7. And we we seek Jesus and uh, in the morning, early morning. Sorry? 
Yeah, so Friday morning we had 17 people come and pray. Come on, 90. Yo, okay, ladies, how many? 15, 17. Are we bidding? What's going on? But uh, we had lots of people praying. So it was really cool. I want to encourage you to do that. A lot of us, we've got ambitions, we've got all of these things, we've got desires for ministry and all of those things. Start there, 5 o'clock in the morning on your face, seeking Jesus. Don't tell me you're called to ministry, but you can't come pray at 5 in the morning. Shall we move on? Okay. Come on. It's about Jesus seeking his face. Seeking his face. I'd gladly build a church with someone that prays with me when it's looking for me. So good. I love it. Okay. Uh, Debbie, come share your testimony, and then uh, we're going to take up the tithes and offerings. Yeah, you know, I came to my seat today. I sat over there. I promise you the Bible over there is totally different than the Bible over there. Anyway, most of you know my testimony. Well, a few of them, because I'm always out here. Okay. But for those of you that don't, just to put a very long story short, I literally was, I was given three to six months to live a little while back, not that long ago. And I'm still very much alive. Anyway, it's really been absolutely amazing. My journey's been amazing. And I've been like really steadfast and hanging on to Jesus and everything else. And what happened recently was that I had to go for blood tests. Very, very prayed for me for that time. And I had to go for blood tests. And I really believe that these tests are going to come back. And that they were going to be absolutely amazing. Yeah. Everything was going to be fine. And when the test results came back, they weren't okay. And I was devastated beyond devastated. My whole world fell apart. I knew that Jesus was there, and I was trying to keep on with dear life from Jesus. But it's really so badly that, sure, I can't even explain how I did the wobby. I don't even want to explain how I did the wobby because it was just too terrible. I was very human. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and what I actually realized was that I had to cling on to Jesus and I had to keep on going and keep on persevering. As you said, it's not what you see now, it's what you are going towards too. You know what Jesus said to me was that it's not, I'm being healed. I am healed. And it's a case of that I have to actually step out in that and walk with God. It has been that. Let's move this thing out of the way. Believing is seeing. Believing is seeing. So, Father, we believe with Debbie right now. We declare the finished work of Jesus over her. Father, your word says that she is a new creation. Lord, we ask you right now to wash her blood in your blood. Father, to remove all infirmity, all sickness, all ailments in her body, all pain in her body right now. Father, we release the resurrected power of Jesus over her. Of Jesus. Right now, the healing power, the healing power, the healing power all over her body. Yeah, come on. Thank you, Father. Come on, just keep praying. Church of your hand, church. Come on, the weight of your glory, God. The weight of your glory, Jesus. The power of Jesus Christ. We thank you for a good report. We thank you for a good report in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Peace and abandria. Just bless your name. Come on, so good, church. So good. Someone's mind bringing you back that thing. 
No shoes about the chase, the chase break. Is it okay if we do some more testimonies after the service? Otherwise, we're, gonna, we're not going to have time. We have test, we have testimonies here. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, on Saturday, on Saturday, I was, selling, uh, I was celebrating my anniversary, my five-year anniversary. So we had a little bride and whatever. And uh, um, after everything, 
my chest opened. I couldn't breathe. And they took me into, my son took me into hospital. And the doc, the, when I came there, my chest was not wheezing and whatever. They still put me on the drug and the oxygen and whatever. So on Sunday, the, the doctor said to me, he didn't know what, the, he can't tell me how long I'm going to stay in hospital and whatever. And on Monday morning, the doctor came again to me. He said, Mr. Sreedo, what happened? I look like there's nothing wrong with you. So what, what is going on? As a doctor, I can only thank the Lord. The, do, the Lord used to do Thank you, Lord. We've got so many testimonies. I've got to tell people to stop testifying. Church without a testimony is a dead church. Because testimonies prove that God is alive. What does Revelation say? That overcame him with the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Come on, church. Beautiful. A couple of announcements this week. We've got half and bowls. This past week, we prayed for Senegal and the farm things and the protests. And there's been so many testimonies of God, people encountering Jesus at these protests. Come on, church. So it's our privilege that we've got to do that. So this week, again, we're going to be praying. And we're going to be seeking the face of Jesus Wednesday night. It's going to be really cool. We're expecting for it. Um, and then something that's very, very important. At the end of the month, we are celebrating um, our two years of being a church here. And we have got a special conference called Encounter Weekend. And yeah, it's going to be a phenomenal time with Apostle Ryan and Apostle um, Melissa. And they're coming from Durban. They've got a church in Benito. Magnificent church. It's uh, called Freedom House. The church does not have walls. Literally, they don't have walls. It's a very cool space. And they've been seeing God do beautiful things in the ministry. They recently planted a church. And on the first Sunday, they had over 100 baptisms. And God is moving, and so uh, we want to invite you to this. You've got to register for the Friday and the Saturday. Friday night is almost full. We cannot allow more people to come. If we are full, we can't get a bigger venue. So you've got to please register for the Friday, the Saturday, and the Sunday. It's going to be a, a beautiful time as they're going to be ministering to us. The last time Pastor Ryan was here, he prophesied what we are doing now. We are walking in what he prophesied. So it's very cool. I want to encourage you to come to that. The links are in the, in the groups, the WhatsApp group. If you haven't got it, let us know. We want you to register. It's going to be a, a beautiful, beautiful time. Is that all of them? Next Tuesday, we've got our Zambia Information Night. We are going to Zambia to preach the Word, the word of God, to see a nation touched by the presence of Jesus. And so we've got an Information Night next week, Tuesday night. If you feel that the Lord has called you to the nations, I want you to come to that night. And uh, we're going to be sharing the vision for Africa and also praying for you and ministering to you and introduce you to the angel of our church. It'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. So I want to encourage you to come to that. Uh, anything else? Oh, yes. We have got a building fund because the Lord gave us a word and said that he's going to give us property, going to give us land in the future. And you can do it now too. But we're so, we're so excited for it. And so we've got a building fund and you've got an opportunity to sow into the building fund and uh, i want to you guys can see we need more space right yeah. okay we need more space and so i've got very exciting news for you we are one signature away from moving into our own big property and we are we are paying and it will be a beautiful i can share the story some other time but it's really beautiful and the lord is taking care of us, but we need your help. We need you to sow into the building fund. We need you to sow into the church. We've got to pay a deposit. We've got to do all sorts of stuff. And uh, we need you as a church to come alongside of us to sow into what God's going to do. And we'll give some more information over the next couple of weeks about that specifically. But uh, yeah, we're so excited for it because we know it's the next season of our church. And then God is going to do magnificent stuff. Have I got all of them, Jason? Pray, I did pray. Got all of them. I think I did all of them. Well, this morning it is. Uh, no, yes. By the way, we're fasting. If you didn't notice, that's a good thing. You shouldn't notice when someone is fasting. 
And so uh, I want to encourage you, if you, um, Pastor Maxine has been sending out daily devotions. Uh, we've been really pressing into the presence of the Lord. And uh, over the next uh, two more weeks, as we continue to fast and continue to seek the Lord together, we fast because we want Jesus. We don't fast because we want breakthrough. Jesus is breakthrough. Jesus is healing. Jesus is deliverance. He is enough. So we seek Him because He's enough. I want to encourage you to jump along. If the Lord leads you to do a water fast, I don't care what the Lord leads you to do, just do it with us so that we're in unity and then we know that God's going to move in the lives of our people. So it's very cool, very exciting. Is that Amal? Here we go. Okay, this morning it is my privilege to invite up Charlene, who's going to be taking up the offering for us. This red bucket's the building fund. The blue bucket is the normal church tithes and offerings. And so, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. So Charlene's got about several pages there. So good luck. Thanks, Charlene. Good morning, church. So, um, how beautiful and how full of worship this morning. I promise you guys, linger in his presence all morning. So, yeah, I just, I just pray as we move into the segment of giving this morning, I just pray that we remain that stance of worship. Because our tithe and offering is an extension of our worship. He deserves it all, amen. Amen. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's always an honor and privilege to stand up here and give the time offering message. But what makes it even more special for me and Nick this morning is that um, the very family or the very person that uh, laid the foundation for our family um, in terms of where the time offering is concerned is sitting in church this morning. We love you, Nana. And we just thought, I am giving the time and offering this morning, the message. But I just wanted, I felt in this moment, I really wanted to honor you and you and Jet. She's not here, but she's standing for um, yeah, just for your, your heart, the way you guys love people, your integrity across the board, your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, and you don't even, you don't even, like, inch to, you know, just for your generosity, and just for the way that you guys live. You guys are true testimonies and a morale of the kingdom. We just love you and honor you. Well, thank you for being so instrumental, not only in our lives, but in many other lives. So thank you. Right. Yeah. and offerings. <laughs> <laughs> so we're very awesome to give the message on tithes and offerings this morning. I really wanted to get a rainbow word for us this morning. Something that is uh, for this season for us. And I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, I'll be your mouthpiece this morning. What do you want to say on tithes and offerings? What do you want to highlight on tithes and offerings this morning? I'll just be your mouthpiece. So, of course, it was three days later, but when you least expect it, he gave me three pictures. And um, he gave me three pictures. And the first one was, um, was it not? I love the way how he uses the simple things around us, the very simple things around us to, to explain his heart or his, his message. And um, so the first one he gave me was a picture of a monopoly set for a board game. The second picture he gave me was a picture of the board game Mad. And the third picture was a very intricate Lego set. So I'm sure everyone in this room has at least played Monopoly once in their lives. Okay? So we all know the rules or how you win the game, the end, the end result. Well. Does it well? For some. <laughs> Me, it always ends well. <laughs> so it's all about self games. You just gotta get as much money as possible, as much property as possible, buy out people, hustle and bustle. And I just saw God say, that's the world that we know. That's the world that we know today. Then the board game man. I don't know if many of you have played that game. I don't think you can get that game anymore. But um, yeah, we have that game. But uh, it's actually quite a difficult game to play, to transition into. If you play Monopoly and you try and play this game, it's the total opposite of Monopoly. The actual aim of the game is to give everything away. And it actually proves to be quite difficult. Like you have so much money, you're trying to give it away and give it away, and you can't. But it's actually quite difficult to, you know. But eventually, as you play the game, I thought God said, that's my kingdom. That's how the church, that's my kingdom meant to look like, you know And then the Lego sets. Um, if any of you, have, I'm sure all those with kids have got very intricate Lego sets at home, we, we have a couple. Um, on the front of the cover, you'll see it's like an amazing Lego piece, an amazing Lego set, um, structure or whatever. And uh, but if you open page for page, it's very simple, even though it looks very intricate, it's very simple to put together. You just follow the instructions block by block, and you put it together. However, 
even if you, if you do, don't follow the instructions and you put just one block, one block which may seem insignificant in the wrong place, you're not going to get the end results. Okay? And I felt God say, that is my instruction for my people. That is my plan A for my people. It's very involved and it's very, it's very intricate and structured, but it's very simple if you just follow my ways. So when God, uh, yeah, when He gave me this, He dropped this out. He dropped this out thing in my spirit, and um, I wrote it down. I didn't want to miss anything out or allow my very poor memory to regurgitate it this morning because it was so profound. So I'm going to read it this morning for you. So He said, many of my people, the church, are wondering why we are not getting ahead in our finances. They are tangled up in a vicious cycle of worldly thinking and half-heartedly tugging on Malachi three ten. You all know Malachi 3.10? Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I'll not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing you don't have room enough to contain it. Okay? So we're talking half hearted in that scripture. We are not bringing, are not bringing the whole tithe into my storehouse, either due to current financial circumstances or fear of the future. They are withholding. Malachi 3.10 uh, 3, is not a Lego set which you can build and achieve by altering my instruction to suit your, either your way of thinking or your current circumstance. I have clearly given instruction with the tithe is concerned and the outcome if you follow it with all your heart. All my people need to do is trust me. Amen. Trust the process even though it may seem backwards to give everything out of lack. This is how you break the cycle of poor mentality. And you begin to live and walk in the blessing which I talk about. I am the only true and sure thing. I am the only sure thing. Guys, I tell you what, the writings of the war, we've all gone through this lockdown and we've all been affected in one way or another. It's things that we hold on so dearly and tightly to, our security blankets, our jobs, our businesses, um, our finance, our investment was ripped, ripped out from you. Within an instant, overnight. But I thank you, Jesus, that your word, that your word says, my word will never pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will always stand. So this church, can I encourage you, this more than ever, this is the season to be investing in the kingdom like never before. This is the time to be investing in the kingdom because I think this was just the trial run. And God wants us to live in that cycle of blessing. He wants us to live in that cycle of blessing. We, um, we, yeah. Malachi 3.10 basically is a summary of God wanting to see if he can get money through us, he can get, get money to us. Okay. And we're going to live in that, get through and to, through and to. And that's how we're going to live in the blessing in these times. Yeah. So yeah, I just want to encourage you this morning. Good, yeah. I'd love to pray for us this morning. So if you'd like to get your uh, your offerings ready um, for those of you online, I mean, you can go jump online. Our banking details are there. And if it's for ministries, for the hippies, there's snack scan in front. And there's also uh, two buckets, as Perry mentioned. Obviously, the blue one is for your normal tar, and the red one is for the building fund. Um, I encourage you to double dip because our church is beautiful and we're about to expand our tents. And uh, yeah, Ooh, that doesn't come cheap. So, <laughs> all this morning, I just look at each and every member of this church and those watching my television. Bless their hands, Lord. May the seed they sow this morning go forth and multiply in your kingdom. Let this time of worship become a lifestyle blessing rather than a stumbling block. I pray you teach us, Jesus. Teach us your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good, man. Woo! That's my wife. you sure you want to preach? Nice. Give it that. Skip a beat. <laughs> Come on, now. Why don't we come up and give this for free? To come and give your tithes, your offerings, your gifts, your seeds. And uh, yeah, we'll do a few seconds and then we'll move on.
as you come up and give, uh, just so that everybody knows, after the service, we are going to be baptizing a few people. So if you want to get baptized, let us know. If you need a, a bath, let us know. Um, but we want to encourage you. We're going to be baptizing some people at 150 down at Glen Glen Beach. And uh, please, if you've not been baptized, come. If you need, I don't care if you don't have clothes with you, it doesn't matter. Uh, you need to be baptized. And so we're going to go down to the beach. I want to encourage as many people as possible from church to come with down with us as we celebrate someone dedicating their life to Jesus publicly, testifying of their Lord and their Savior. It's a real privilege for us to do it. So if you haven't been baptized, let us know. We'd love to baptize you today. It's going to be good. Look at and that, so these kids are brilliant. Henry comes up to me and said, In the spirit, I'm holding a million rand. And he drops it into the building fund. I was like, Thank you for your faith, Henry. Thank you for your faith. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Come on. If he's got the faith for it, I'm like, All for it. I'm like, Yes, Jesus. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, I think I said everything, but this morning. It is absolutely our privilege to ordain Nick and Shalene, and um, they are going to be moving to Canada uh, shortly, where Nick and Shalene will be assisting Nick's brother, who's got a church called Dominion Life in Saskatoon. And uh, Nick's brother Bradley has got an exceptional ministry into the nations. He's got a ministry of signs and wonders, and uh, we are so privileged to be releasing uh, this beautiful couple as a son and a daughter in the house. And that's the way it should be. People shouldn't leave church because they're offended at the pastor. They should leave the house because they've been released. And um, that was way better than what you guys responded, but it's okay. Oh, oh, amen. Rudolph said amen. Pastor said amen. Amen. Praise the other. Okay, so... Um, a couple of months ago when I was in Zambia, it's more than a month ago, it's a year ago, um, Nick and I were in Zambia supporting another ministry called Take the Nations and, and we were in that, uh, I went up there for a week, Nick was up there for three weeks, four weeks, Nick was up there for a month and I went up for a week to just go and support and um, I, in that week I had some of the coolest conversations with Nick, we saw some of the craziest miracles and God just did something so beautiful. And um, those of you that are friends with Nick on Facebook, he's got this profile picture of him hugging a lady. And the lady that he was hugging was full of demons. And he hugged the demons out of her. Yeah. And it was, it was so powerful to see how he loved people that were, it, it was rough, and he loved them. And um, that is the mark of a true disciple. Is Jesus said, how have you loved? And uh, this morning it is so, I'm so glad that I can invite a lover of Jesus to come and share with you. I can invite a son of the house. And I can invite not only my friend, but I'm trying hard not to cry, but a brother. And um, I'm so excited for the word that he's going to be sharing with you today because he lives that word. He doesn't just preach a fancy word. He's going to preach and share. I hope he did. <laughs> But I know he's going, to be, he's going to be sharing a really powerful word with you. And then what we're going to be doing is, after um, he's preached, I'm wondering if we shouldn't do it beforehand, because I'm just thinking your word might lead us into ministry. So why don't we do it right now? We're going to right now ordain them into the fivefold ministry. If you're on the floor, then Shalim preaches. Let's, let's get some shot. Johnny, did I throw you under the wheel, under the bus now? You're right. Okay, let's get another chair. And so, church, I want you to stick out your hands towards them. And uh, we're going to ask one or two more people just to come and surround them and stand behind them. Okay, Charlie, you guys need to take off your shoes. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be washing their feet. We're just going to be loving on them for a few seconds. And so, um, yeah, thankfully he washed his feet. And uh, um, Andre and Megan, why don't you guys also come and just stand behind them. And we're going to be just praying over them and just receiving them into the work of the ministry. Is that cool? 
And so this is a privilege that we as a church has, have, have, you know, help my full thing. Um, but it's really, really cool. And we just want to love on them and honor them. So stick out your hand towards them. And we're just going to minister to them. John, you're just preparing the ice cold water for your feet. The sauna bath. And you want to you wanna also watch Michael next week, Ava? You're more than welcome to you. If, uh, if parents, if you want your kids to come and watch, you can you can come stand with them. Because this is something beautiful. Jesus said, unless I wash your feet, you cannot have the kingdom. And so we are we want to be like Jesus. So if the kids want to come watch, they can come stand around and they can just see how we just love on them. Okay. Okay, so this morning, uh, Pastor Rudolph and Pastor Sonia and me and Maxine, Pastor Maxine, we're just going to wash your feet and just love on you. And so, yeah, we just thank you. Okay. Father, we just thank you. You guys can put one, put that other foot in there. We just thank you this morning that as we wash their feet, we honor the gift and the call that's upon their lives. Lord, your word said, blessed are the feet of those who carry the good news. And so, Father, this morning we bless not only their feet, we bless their marriage. We bless their family. We bless their family. In Jesus' name. We just thank you right now, God. Lord, that as we wash their feet, all the dust from the past, all the stuff that they endured, every, every obstacle, everything that they went through, you will wash away completely. We anoint their feet this morning. Give me your other feet. Let's anoint his feet. Let's anoint his feet. We honor them. We bless them. Just like that. Right now, Jesus' name. Just anoint their feet. Just thank you, God. We just want to give the mic to um, Andre there. Just thank you, God. Just thank you, God. I see I see you as a lion with this long mane and next to you is Charlene walking as a lion and your son Kalal as a cup and you guys are going to walk off into the distance you're going to walk into the purposes the Lord has ordained for you to walk in before the creation of the world. Father, yes, so we, we've come to love this couple, Lord, and their family, Lord. And we, we, we are sad to see them go, Lord, but we are joyful, Lord, knowing to, Lord, that, that you have called them, Lord, into a nation, Lord, where people are waiting, Lord. They're waiting for you, Jesus, to visit them. And, and Nick and Charlene are there, that you're going to use their hands to minister unto these people, Father. There's going to be signs and there's going to be wonders. So we thank you, Father, for the work that you're going to do through them. We bless them. We honor them. And Lord, we magnify the name of Jesus through them. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. May we just release all of heaven right now over them. All that heaven has. All that heaven has right now, we just release it in Jesus' name. We just thank you, God, that you've called them to such a time as this, God, that you're going to catapult them into a new level, into a new dimension, into a new authority. I thank you that I see the Lord putting new shoes on you for just this new season that you'll be stepping into. So I thank you, God, for the new mantle that you placed upon them, God, to step into the fire for not that they've not done it before, but Lord, we're just confirming what you're saying over them, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, Lord, that the anointing and the presence of you will just increase, increase, and going from glory to glory, glory to glory, and the weight of your glory, the weight of your glory. Jesus. <laughs> 
Can I just ask that the kitties quickly move away? I'm just going to ask Pastor Rudolph and Pastor Sonia to just pray and just dry their feet. Amen. Pastor Rudolph, before you do that, just pray for us. Yeah, Father, what a privilege this morning, Lord. What a privilege this morning, Jesus, to be at your feet. You wash your disciples' feet, Jesus, and you serve them. And Father, they accomplish great things. And Lord, as we wash Nick's and Shalini's feet this morning, God, they're going to accomplish great and wonderful things for your kingdom. How lovely are the feet of those who preach the good news. Lord, we just want to come today and just bless them in Jesus' name. And release them, Lord, as servants into your kingdom, into nations, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just see that love will abound wherever they go. Love will break through wherever they go. Love is going to heal nations, Jesus. It's because of what they can in, in their hearts and in their lives, Father. So today, Father, we just come and we bless them. Bless them in Jesus' name as they go. Bless them where they move. Bless them where they minister. Bless them, Father, in every relationship. Bless them with every person that they're about to encounter. Lord, we release encounters upon them in Jesus' name. Heavenly encounters. Heavenly encounters on Nick and Shirley, Lord. Heavenly encounters. We bless Him, Lord, we release heaven over them in Jesus, and the fullness of heaven, the fullness of heaven. No limitations, Lord, no limits, nothing. Provision is there, God. Miracles, signs, and wonders is there, Lord. We open heavens over their lives in Jesus' name. Jesus' name, as one, Lord. In Jesus' name, we bless the Lord. Thank you. Lord, thank you that we can just pray, Lord, that love will just flow through them with, like open rivers, Lord. That the love of Christ will just flow into the nations through them, Lord. That that will be the gateway for your love to go, Lord. I pray that I just see love, love just flowing over them and flowing into the nations, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that your love will change nations, Lord. Your love, love will change hearts, Lord. And your love will go before them, Lord. And thank you, Lord, 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 that you've loved them with an everlasting love, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that because they've experienced your love, they can go into the broken world and just take your love, Lord. Yes, so, Father, right now, we welcome them into the fivefold ministry for the work of the ministry set apart for the work of the gospel into nations. And Father, we welcome the nations to them and we bless them in Jesus' mighty name. We just thank you, God. I actually, one more thing, I'm just going to hand Bobby over. But um, this morning, we had some friends watching from Australia, and uh, they just released a, a scripture over you guys, and I thought it was a really, really beautiful scripture. They said this, they saw, it's from Isaiah 49, and it says this, A picture of your city is drawn on my hand, says the Lord, and you are always in my thoughts. Your city will be built faster than it was destroyed. Those who attacked you will retreat and leave. Look around. You will see your people coming. As surely as I live, the Lord promises that your city with its people will be as lovely as a bride wearing her jewelry. So Father, we just release that over them. In Jesus' mighty name. We bless Nick and we bless Shali. In Jesus' name. Come on, and everybody said? Amen. 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 Uh, Andres, one more thing. Nick, as I saw you, I saw the vision as you ministering in the next few minutes. I just see shackles falling off. Thank people. you, Lord. Thank you, I Father. I see some men blocks around people's feet. And Thank you, Lord. Fall off and break Amen. Even this morning as you, so be it, Lord. As you, as you bring forth the word. Thank you, The Father. word is going to come forth in power. Thank you, Lord. Break off those things. Thank you, Jesus. Lives that are not okay. Thank you, Father. So be it, Lord. Awesome. Come on, so good. So good. Come on, church. It's not often that we get to see this in church. 
There's a lot of people, yeah, we can give them a hand. A lot of people feel or often believe that it's something that you have to study towards when it's actually a calling from heaven. You can study all your life. It doesn't mean you're a pastor or evangelist, prophet, teacher, evangelist. It's a calling from heaven to lay down your life for the fivefold ministry. Their lives are no longer their own. It's very cool. Okay, let's uh, let's give that. Give me this thing. Watch out. Okay, Nick has got several books to read for you, so get ready. Um, as he's going to minister the word. Thank you, Pastor Nick. Thanks. I uh, hope you don't mind I'm being able to put my shoes on. They're anointed now, so I'm keeping them off for a while. Sure. I'll be able to talk right now. <laughs> Uh, thank you everyone for being here and for being part of it and um, yeah, we are just so thankful for our church, uh, Perry Maxine. Every time I talk about you, you run away. We love you Maxine, continue. <laughs> like um, when me and Charlene came out of our last church and um, I actually stepped out into full-time ministry, I went through a very hard time. Um, we got a lot of people around us that gave us a lot of bad advice. Uh, got a lot of fear poured into us, uh, telling us that we were going to fail. You know, most people who step out into ministry fail. That's kind of how it goes. And, um, you know, I became uh, an orphan in the, in the church. I felt like I could need to do it on my own. Nobody else believes. So I'm going to believe on my own. And I'm going to I'm going to accomplish things by myself. I don't need anyone else. You know, that, that was my idea. But then I stepped into this church... Uh, thank you to Johnny, the guy on the guitar, who invited me to come one night to Hop and Ball. And I met Perry and them, and then when we went away to Zambia, I got to actually speak with them and spend some time with them. And um, the, what Perry says and the things that he preaches, he actually lives it out. And I hadn't seen that before. I'd seen a lot of pastors saying things and, and you know, declaring things and reading the word, but they didn't really understand it or live it out. You know, it wasn't their lifestyle, but the Perry lived it out. And I could see it on him, I could see the gifts on him, I could see that there was fruits in his life. Uh, the first thing he spoke to me about was marriage. Nothing else but his marriage. Uh, it wasn't about how big your gifting is, or how many angels he had seen, or all the miracles that he had seen. It was the most important thing in your life is marriage. It's the most important thing. And for me, we were going through a hard time because of ministry. Uh, as you know, there's a lot of battle finances when you go into it. And it, it causes a lot of problems. But um, Nana is the one that we love so much. Uh, Nana is the reason that me and Charlene are still married, her and Jesus together. Uh, she's the one that when I got saved, um, actually helped us in our marriage uh, to stay together, to keep our family together. And we will always honor you and love you for that. Like this. Uh, not only that, she was just the one that um, showed me that healing and that uh, God actually had power, that it wasn't... Um, just words in a book. Uh, she led me to people that are uh, encouraging me to actually seek after uh, what the word says. Um, one of my things when I would say was that I wasn't going to be a hypocrite. If the Bible says it, I'm going to do it. Yeah, come and on. I read a lot in the Bible that people were healing people. And come on, Nick. I was like, okay, Lord, well, if that's true, I want to see it. Come on. And then I used to encourage me with that. So, yeah. Now, I love you guys. Now, my test me, I'm not going to tell it because Charlene's heard it a thousand times and she's lived it and she doesn't want to hear it anymore. <laughs> uh, but the basis of it is that uh, my dad was a pastor. He got cheated on. Oh, well, he cheated on my wife. No. <laughs> my dad cheated on my wife. That's, that's Jerry, Jerry Springer stuff right there. <laughs> See, we all mess up sometimes. <laughs> But uh, no, so he cheated on my mom and um, I ended up hating God because of it and went far away from him, became a gangster, drug addict, um, I was uh, alcoholic, I did everything that you can think of, I've probably done it, uh, every naughty thing you can think of, I've probably done it. And um, God came to me when I was a DJ, I was a DJ for 20 years, uh, quite a famous DJ at Tiger Tiger, the nightclub, the one that was always in the newspapers, that was me. And um, God came to me in my DJ box and came and touched me while I was DJing. And um, then I ended up cheating on my wife. Uh, became a real, I was a real horrible person, dirty mouth. Um, 
I, you know, you wouldn't have wanted to be around me. I was very arrogant. Uh, if you touched me, I'd probably sooner punch at you. I was a very horrible person. Not the love that you guys always talk about. So when people tell me I'm loving, and you see that, it doesn't like sit on me because that's not who I was. It hasn't. That's not the person that I was. But that's Jesus that you see. It's not me, because the me was a horrible person. And it's not something you want to be with. But anyway, so God, um, the next morning on the bed, on next to my bed, I was crying out to him. He came and filled me with his presence. I was stuck on the floor. Um, and then Jesus walked into my room, came behind me, and told me that, that he forgives me. Come on, Nick. And that nothing in this world can, you can tell him, Come nothing on, in this world can separate me from his love. So good, Nick. But I got up and I said, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I have to do everything that the word says. I have to make sure that my life honors it now. And um, so I went to clean up my house, got rid of all the pornography in it, the alcohol in the back of the cupboards, uh, everything, even witch games and Harry Potter, or anything that I thought God would not like, I took care of it. It went out. I had to go. Uh, and as I was going around here, I'd speak and say, don't forget that, don't forget that, don't forget that. And uh, just took a whole bag, threw it away. And I was done. Never touched um, alcohol again. was completely free from it. Didn't do AA, any of that stuff. Uh, and I was drinking two bottles of Patron the night before. So never touched it again. Uh, never went to pornography again. Um, wasn't affected to it anymore. Come on. Um, Come on. It's good. Yeah. Even, uh, I even had a spirit of fear because while I was a gangster, they put a gun to my head and shot it off when I left them, uh, trying to kill me. And um, I had a thing of fear the whole time. I was fearful of men. I was molested when I was young about men. So I had a, a lot of fear of people. And uh, that fear was completely taken from me the day that I got saved. So um, when you see me on the streets and I'm praying and all that, that's because God freed me from that thing. I'm not scared of what you say or I'm not worried about what you think about me. Um, yeah, I've lost a lot of friends and I'm okay with that because I have Jesus. Come on. Um, but uh, when I came to this church, I found a, a real friend and that's Perry. He's my my bro, <laughs> my brother. And, uh, yeah, I've never had a true friend before and someone who actually believes like me. And that's Perry over there. So today I asked the Lord, just like my wife, um, Perry's already stolen most of my, my, my sermon. Yeah, yeah, confirmation showing in so I just think he's stealing. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Spirit cheated. <laughs> <laughs> so today I'm going to be reading a scripture. If you guys have your Bibles, you should have your Bibles. They say um, maybe 99% of people who have Bibles go to heaven. It's a good saying. So if you have a Bible, turn to Isaiah 54 verse 2 with me. I'm not going to turn there because I raise it down to make it easier. Yeah, come on. It's, uh, my Bible is here. It's falling apart. They say a, a man whose Bible is falling apart isn't falling apart, which is great. <laughs> well, these little things are for prison, so I'm ready to go. They're all color-coded. Some, uh, some of my friends from Gideon's are here today. Uh, the reason that I started going to prison was because of the Gideon guys. Uh, they made a door for me and it was incredible. So uh, I miss prison. I'll go back. Yeah, I was scared of COVID. I'll go take care of it. <laughs> um, yeah, so Isaiah 54, verse 2, if you didn't get started. This is a scripture that Perry was speaking about a little while ago, and we've been using it towards building the, the building. But this is the scripture God gave me last night. And it has nothing to do with my, my message. And I'm like, well, how does this work in what I wanted to say? And uh, so he opened me up and gave me a, a test of book. Taught me what I wanted to say. Okay. So here we go. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. So usually we use the scripture to talk about building the church and growing the church more and uh, it's time to increase the capacity of the church building. Uh, that's what we, we usually talk about. But as we know, the church is you. That's what the Bible says, that we are, there is, we are the church. Uh, the place of worship, the temple of the Lord is you. You are the temple. And in the Old Testament, the temple was a tent uh, before they built the actual building. So when God's saying enlarge your tent, he's talking about enlarge yourself. But that scripture says, enlarge the place of your tent. It's not even talking about the tent. It's talking about the place of the tent. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have gone tenting. Anyone that tents here? Yeah. Uh, I've been once or twice. My wife hates it, so we don't go that often. Um, <laughs> you know, we went once and we left uh, after two hours because she couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> 
to pack up and go. I'm like, sorry guys, we have to leave. <laughs> but uh, basically when you lay out a tent, you've got to make sure the area is clean, right? You've got to clean out all the little stones, all the little twigs, make sure there's no poopoo on the floor. Because the last thing you want to do is sleep on top of poopoo. Yeah. yeah? You've got to make sure that it's nice and cleaned out. You've got to make sure there's no snake holes close by, uh, no foxholes or uh, jackals or whatever else is in the area. You've got to make sure that you're far away from anything that can actually get to you. So God, God is saying, enlarge the place where you're about to put your tent. Come on. Enlarge it. Go and clean out all the, the rubbish. Go and take care of all the things that have been tripping you up over the years. Uh, today I'm going to be specifically speaking on healing. Uh, because healing is something that I, I'm really passionate about. It's something that I've seen the Lord do incredible things in. But you can use this in any part of your life. With the finances, with your family, with your business, with... Uh, reaching the lost, the ministry, all that stuff. You can use the same uh, concept with it. So enlarge the place. Go clean it all out. Find out what are all the things that trip you up. In healing, some of the things that trip you up are 101 reasons why Jesus doesn't heal. That's a twig. You need to take care of that thing and throw it up. Yeah, it has to go. Because that is faithless. That is the reasons why God can't do what he does. You've got to take care of those things. Uh, your understanding of some of the scriptures in the word. If it doesn't match up to Jesus Christ and his life, your understanding is wrong. Yeah, it's good, Nick. Because Jesus said, I am. My father, my father is me. So when you see the son, you've seen the father. That's what he said. So Jesus is the perfect um, theology of who, who God is. Yeah, it's good. So like if that, we read anything in the word and it doesn't match up to Jesus' life, then the way that we're reading is wrong. We need to change our, our understanding of the word. It's good. Because God, is, God doesn't change, right? Yeah. He's the same forever. So those are, those are some of the things that we need to, we need to take care of. Um, another thing is people that you're listening to online or, or videos that you're watching and people who are talking about healing but have never seen someone get healed. Stop listening to them. Yeah. They Come have on. no fruit in what they're preaching. Yeah, it's good. There must be fruit. If you want to know how to heal people, listen to people who are seeing people heal. Come on. It's the basics uh, of anything in our lives, right? You want to be a good runner, go... Practice with Usain Bolt, you'll be good pretty soon. Right? Yeah. Maybe, unless you're a Pedro then you won't. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Pedro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tennis players, I can't say anything about them. <laughs> so that's the main thing, is make sure all that stuff is out. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I had to do, because I went to Christian school when I was younger, I learned a lot of false theology. A lot of things that did not match up to the Bible. A lot of things that were passed down through generations to generations. And it was usually from a place of unbelief that that was passed down. I tried something that didn't work. I created the theology and then passed that theology down the line. Yeah, come on. And the Bible says that those yeah. kind of theologies actually make the word null and void. Wow. There's, there's things that we pass on make the word null and void in our lives. Sure. So there is something that can stop God working in your life. It's you. Yeah. It's your way that you think. Come so on. you've got to take care of those things. You've got to get them out of your life. Then the next part of that scripture is about spreading out to the right and to the left. No, no, I'm reading the second part of that scripture, sorry. The next part is stretching your tent curtains wide. I'm going to stretch you today because I'm going to, for the first time, I don't usually do this, I haven't got a lot of time, so I'm going to go through really quick and tell you a couple of uh, testimonies of things that I've seen. Um, this is not boasting, my wife is here to make sure that I don't uh, get unhumble in the way that I speak. I don't want to come across prideful. I want you to know that when I'm telling you the things that I'm telling you, it's that you know that it is possible that God can do these things. That Jesus is able to heal every disease and every sickness that you can think of. That he is not holding back if you are suffering from the disease today. He is the healer. And he used the gangster, drug addict, DJ to do, um, to do these works with him. So I'm going to tell you a couple of testimonies. Some of my favorite ones that... Um, that have really marked me. Um, I have seen two people raised from the dead already. Come on. Where Woo. I prayed for and they were raised on, from Ned. the dead. So yes, Jesus. I know that God can do it. I have prayed for, I don't know how many uh, dead people. Usually when somebody dies, um, the first one of them saying, hey. Come on. I know they died, but can I come pray for them? Can I come raise them? Come on. I'm like, you, you're crazy. I'm like, you. <laughs> the only answer I can get is yes or no, right? Come on. <laughs> it's not going to cost me anything. So I prayed for a lot of people who have been dead, but I have seen two people dead. One was a little boy who was written over 
by a car and he was rushed to the hospital and he was brain dead on arrival. Uh, he was five years old. Uh, my son was five years old at the same time. And uh, I got a call through the church that I was with to please go pray for him. And uh, when I got there, he was already gone. The doctors were ready to unplug him. They told the, the parents to say goodbye. All of his family was there to say goodbye. And I sat in the corner um, and I asked, please can I just pray for him once? And I went over to him and I said, Lord, thank you that he will live and not die. Come on, Nick. And if they unplug him, he'll wake up. Come on, Nick. And the family was like, okay. Come on. They thought I was going to come bless him and say, you know, goodbye, enjoy your, your trip to heaven, you know. And um, sorry, I walked back and forth because it's how the Holy Spirit makes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, when I went to the corner, I went to stay out of the way because I was saying goodbye. So I gave them their space. And I was like, Lord, I did not come here to watch a five-year-old die. Come on. I did not come to this, this hospital yes, Lord. to watch someone the same age as my son die. I'm not come doing on, that. Jesus. That's not happening. Well, if they unplug him, he's getting up. That's it. And um, the grandfather all of a sudden came over to him and says, no, if they unplug him, he's going to get up. I'm like, yes, two or more. That's two of us. That's good. That's what's going to happen. Come on. I said, yes, that's what's going to happen. Come on. So the doctor came and unplugged him and the family's crying and uh, the machine started switching off and the air machine switched off and you could hear it all going. And then the little boy got up, <laughs> stood up, looked at him, ah! yes, and he was like trying to get his ear back. Yes, Lord. And the doctor freaked out. He's like, what's going on? Come on. <laughs> this, is, this is not normal. Quick, turn on all the machines again. He says, I don't understand. He's brain dead. This is not possible. Yep. And uh, the family was freaking out and praising God and running around in circles. It was quite incredible. Um, it was an awesome moment, and the grandfather was happy, and I was happy, and it was really cool. Um, unfortunately, uh, it was a week later, the boy did pass away from another complication. But he rose up he, with enough time for the family to say goodbye to him. One of the issues that was there was that the mom actually wasn't happy when he rose up. She was the only one in the room that wasn't happy about it. And I was like, sure, that's really weird. But he was a, a mistake. He was by accident. Well, not God's mistake, but he was her mistake. And, she didn't really want to keep him. He was staying with the grandparents and they couldn't afford him. And uh, so that uh, was something that you, I was fighting against me. But anyway, he ended up passing away. I actually went back again uh, to go pray for him to raise again. And then even on his death uh, funeral, I again tried to climb on top of the coffin to raise him again. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I laid myself over the top of it. <laughs> Come on, Ned. Raise up. <laughs> Come on. I'm not giving up on you. <laughs> So good, man. Come back. And then I heard the Lord distinctly say to me, he said, stop. And I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> I said, no, no, stop now. That's enough. Because <laughs> like, yeah, I'm close, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's my thing. It's like, I, I want to see this word real, man. Like, it has to be real. We have Woo! to see this in the real. Yeah. It's not stories from the past, right? Come on. It still happens today. The second was a car accident in Florida. Um, we went up for uh, Reynold Bonkey. I went to his school of evangelism. And uh, we were out on the streets in the night and um, speaking to prostitutes and gangsters in the street and uh, leading them to the Lord. We had the uh, pimps following us around, wanting to kill us. It was quite fun. Uh, we went into a, a garage station and I uh, prayed for a veteran who had had his leg blown, uh, like shrapnel had gone through his leg and he had lost a piece of his bone that much out of his legs, so it was, you know, the big shoe, he had one of those, and prayed for him in front of a bunch of uh, prostitutes away for their cigarettes and all that, and his leg grew out, and uh, he was getting up and he was praising, all the prostitutes got freaked out and ran out the, the, the shop, and uh, I was walking out, and a pimp was on the corner, and I heard his thoughts, uh, you know, like Jesus said, his thoughts, I heard his thoughts, and I heard him say, I'm going to kill you when you get outside, and so I decided to walk up to him, and I said, hey, you know, Jesus loves you, man. I hope you don't mind us praying for your, your staff members. <laughs> and uh, I got words of knowledge from him, and I got a whole bunch of words of knowledge about his life, about his children, and, and I was just telling him that God blesses him, and that he, you know, God's got a plan for his life, and all of a sudden his whole demeanor changed, and his thoughts changed, and he was like, oh, please carry on, do what you need to do. And uh, it was really awesome. But while we were staying outside, um, we were busy talking to two gangsters like, on the street. The one guy gave his life to the Lord, the foot of the Holy Spirit, uh, said that he was called to actually teach kids not to be in the gangs, but he was in the gangs. It was a very weird calling. But um, yeah. while I was standing there, I hear this, and I turn and look, and uh, you guys know what a Mustang is, right? This big American cars, yeah? 
turn around and see this Mustang starting across the red road and hit a man. And the man go flying over the top of the car and land behind him. Uh, the Mustang's bonnet looked like this from the, how you hit him. It was bent up in the corner like that. So uh, my natural instinct, even when I wasn't saved, was to always run towards accidents. Uh, because I have a bit of first aid training I want to help. So I ran towards him, got down on him, and said, in the name of Jesus, you will live and not die. Um, now I've been in a lot of places where I've seen people die in car accidents after work. Um, we have been drinking and driving. We have actually climbed in and try to keep them comfortable, try to save them before they die. And uh, what usually happens is they start gobbling because there's no air. The tongue actually goes back into their throat and they start gobbling. And, and that's and then they pass away. And so three, two seconds after they pass away. And this guy had the sap and he was busy. And he was about to pass away. And I'm grabbing him. I said, in the name of Jesus, you will live and not die. And uh, instantly he went, <laughs> <laughs> so the car hit me. I'm like, dude, you were dead. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Your life come was on. Over. Jesus just saved you. Come on, Jesus. Jesus just saved you, man. Good, man. And um, he got up. And in America, the ambulance and the firefighters, they showed up like really fast. It wasn't like, yeah, well, you got to wait uh, four days before you see an ambulance. Yeah. But they showed up straight away and uh, they checked him out. He had no broken bones, come no on. bruises, uh, no yes, cuts. Jesus. Uh, he was released on the spot. They didn't go. Um, so he went inside and bought himself some drinks. I came and sat outside with his little uh, quartz, the 240s, whatever they're called. And he was sat outside and he was busy drinking the wine. And my brother came up to him and said, this stuff's not going to help you. And he went like that. And uh, the beer actually lifted off the ground and went flying to the floor and it broke. And uh, my brother sat with him and told him that Jesus saved his life and he needs to give it to him. The man said that he had been inside for 20 years. He was a leader of one of the gangs in the area. He had been inside for 20 years. He had been released today and he went out on the drinking bridge to party and, and, and have some fun, and he died. He would have died that night if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. Come on. It's incredible, right? So, so good, anyway, he gave his life to Jesus, left his beers and went home. Come on. And he said that he's going to change his life and that he's going to lead his family well. It was really incredible. Um, so that's one of the, the two of the main ones, that obviously raising the dead. We all know that salvation is the best uh, the biggest miracle that you can see, yeah, Lord. the raising of the, the spirit is the best salvation. But Jesus prayed for a lot of sicknesses in the Bible. Come on. In fact, he, he prayed for more sicknesses than he saved people when he was walking on the, on the earth, right? So it must mean something. It must be important to him. Another one for me is Margie. Um, Charlie knows her as well. Um, from Margie, you had little spots all over her ovaries, uh, cancer spots on our ovaries. And uh, I came out of church, we went to our praying for ladies. If the compassion was on me and I broke the rules and I said, Lord, I need to pray for her. Went and prayed for her and asked her what's going on. She was like, no, I don't have money to go to the doctors for this. I have ovaries uh, that have cancer on them and uh, I'm probably going to die. That's kind of what the doctor told me. I said, well, we have Jesus. Let's pray for you. And I uh, prayed for her. Uh, found out a week later that she had 80% um, of the spots had disappeared. Come on. And that the 20% of the left they could remove without putting her under. Come on. She just scraped them off and they were gone. So she was completely healed from that. Two months later, we were sitting in a um, coffee shop inside Canal Wharf, and along comes Margie walking past her like this. With her whole mouth down and her arm and everything. I'm like, Margie, what happened to you? She said, now I had a stroke. I'm like, no way. You just healed a cancer. I had a stroke too. And she said, no, I had a stroke. I said, cool, we're going to pray for you. She said, not right now, I need to get to church. It's taking me an hour to walk. So we went to church, and uh, on the way out, I saw her again. I'm like, Margie, let's go pray. And I uh, took her to the coffee shop, and um, just prayed. I said, in the name of Jesus, uh, stroke her, come on, you go, and be healed. And she said she feels this fire in her head. I said, awesome. That's obviously the Holy Spirit. That's the, the healing power that's going into you. So I carried on in my hand, and I just said, be healed. And I'm just blessing her. And um, next thing she, I said, well, well, try something. Try try move your arm. And she took her arm. She went, and like this. She goes, oh, can you move my arm? And I'm like, yes, Jesus. And I said, you also spoke perfectly. Yeah, come on. <laughs> She's like, I can talk. And then um, I said, what about your leg? And she took it. She had a leg. I'm like, no, let's pray for it. I put my hand on her leg while she's walking. I said, in the name of Jesus, I just bless this leg. Be healed. And as she's walking, she starts walking, and she's walking, and she's walking, and then she's running. And I said, you know, the real testimony of this is if you can run upstairs. 
So all she took, running up the stairs, running back down the stairs, running up the stairs. It took her an hour and a half to get to church from her house that was probably 100 meters away because she couldn't walk properly. And then she was running everywhere. Come on, Jesus. And um, that wasn't the end of it. So I'm like, what else do you have? <laughs> Let's pray for a goal. She's like, no, I was bad off bad back. So I sat her down, grew out her leg. Her back was down. I said, Margie, why do you always walk like this? Because she looks like she's down all the time because she walks like this. She says, now I was born with this bone on my chest. It pokes me in the lungs. So I have to walk like this or I can't breathe. If I do this, it, it pokes me in the lungs and I'll stop breathing. And I said, well, Jesus, can you heal that too? She says, yeah, I think you can. And I'm like, well, let's pray. Put my hand out and I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And the bone popped in my hand. I felt a kick out. And she went, <gasps> Come she on. Like this. I, I wish I had a good photos for you, but before she was this, this crippled old lady like this, and after she walks like this, she's got married now. Um, her whole demeanor's changed. She's an incredible lady. And um, I found out that her son had that same issue. He was born with a two, and uh, grabbed him two weeks later, and the same thing happened again. Popped out, and he was completely healed from it. Which is incredible. I don't know how much time I have left. But anyway, I'm going to go quick. I'm just going to list a whole bunch of things I've seen. I've seen brain damage healed. Uh, someone who, who sniffed in uh, uh, toxics, who worked in an electronics lab, and sniffed in toxics that destroyed her whole entire. Um, all her body parts started sh um, shutting down, and God healed her from that. But she still had brain damage, which hadn't been healed. Um, she couldn't talk properly, and uh, if she was in like, lights like this, she would just shut down and fall on the floor, and she'd be out cold. Uh, and it, it, yeah, so we prayed for her. We were at a Bethel concert, um, and she sat the whole way through the next day. Never, never had to leave because of lights. Uh, she started speaking properly. Come on. She went to the game, and she said, I, I, I don't, even last night I slept, and I haven't slept in years. Come on, Jesus. And, uh, God completely healed her from the brain damage. Uh, alopecia, I've seen alopecia. You guys know what alopecia is? Yeah, it's balding in women, especially. It's when the woman's hair starts falling out. And um, you're actually from the holes. You don't have the tip of your hair completely gone. Uh, one of the faces of alopecia, I got to pray for her and um, the hair started growing back in her hair again where she actually had hair in the follicles. We started growing and it, it, I, I got photos, I'll show you guys if you come on to it. I don't want to put it up on the screen for everyone. Well. But um, she had no hair anyway. She had two patches here and here and then everything else was bald. And after three weeks she came back and she had hair everywhere. Come on, so Jesus. Um, uh, MS, I've seen someone who couldn't walk from MS uh, with crutches who was refusing to have a wheelchair and was dragging herself around, prayed for her in church. She got up, started dancing, went to the front, danced all over the place, uh, went back to the doctor, came back and told me they couldn't find any MS in her body now. Yeah. was completely healed. Mental neuron disease, um, a lady at church jumped out of a wheelchair, started running. Uh, Mental neuron disease was completely healed out of her. I've seen quite a few mountain neuron diseases healed. Uh, scoliosis, so I'm flying through these on purpose because I haven't got much time. But I want you to know that the big ones are possible. You know, it's not just pain and headaches and things like that. Yes, Jesus. And legs growing up. That's not enough. We have to grow our tent a bit more. Yes. We have to, to push our, our face up more. We have to stretch our curtains a yeah. bit more. Um, yeah, I'm just going to list a few. Scoliosis, seeing it pop in my hand and, and the whole back just went straight. And his back was in the shape of a mess like this. Like, not a little one, but he had the big boots on all that and it popped straight in my hand. Um, uh, this the, the prison one, this, this best elbow. The guy had been shot through his arm over here. His elbow was sitting on the top of his arm over here from the operation. And uh, I was teaching him how to heal and my like, Lord. <laughs> The guy's like, uh, yeah, I can heal this. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> Lord, uh, I, I don't think I can do this one. And I told the guys, who wants to pray for him? No, no, not me, sir. No, pastor, not me. I'm like, yeah, do you think it's impossible? And they're like, yes, it's impossible. I said, but nothing's impossible for God. Let's pray for him. And I uh, put my hand on and prayed for him, and it went, <laughs> and the elbow pushed back into place, went back Woo! in. The sky, everything was completely disappeared. He started moving his arm around. He was praising God, and then another guy with a knee that had the same bullet wing. What about me? Like, oh, God. <laughs> Pray for him. He has to go to the It's pretty cool. It's quite amazing. Uh, and then the guys who walk around after saying, I can heal people. <laughs> to, the, to the guys in the prison. I'm like, yes, you can with Jesus. <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah. Cancer stage 5. I've seen someone on their deathbed. 
uh, completely healed from it. And they got up, uh, they lived for another two more years. Unfortunately, their daughter had passed away from cancer before that. And the lady just wanted to go be with her daughter. And, uh, that was her declaration out of her mouth at the time. Uh, that one, and she came the night that she was dying. And they said that she wasn't going to live through the night. And she was already at the delusional stage, which is just before the pastor, they start seeing stuff. And they, and I believe they started to see heaven and the, the white realm, the spiritual realm around them. And um, yeah, so she was dying on her bed. Prayed over her and said, Lord, thank you that she will live and not die. She's going to survive this. I came back a week later thinking that she's probably gone, but I'll go have a look anyway. And uh, there she was, alive in the bed. Um, she was fine. And then she was still saying, I want to go, I want to be with my daughter, I'm ready to die. And then I was like, yo, but do you know Jesus? And I was trying to lead her in a salvation prayer and make sure that she knows where she's going. She's now, I know where I'm going, and while I'm just doing this, the Lord speaks to me and says, what the heck are you doing? He said, Lord, I want to make sure she's going to you. He said, I didn't call you here to make sure she's going to me, I called you here to heal her. And I prayed for her. And so I said, I'm sorry, but you're not dying today. And I prayed for her, and I said, uh, Father, I think that you can change her whole mind about this thing, that she's going to want to live. She had a baby, her daughter, other daughter had a baby coming too. And she was pregnant. She was going to miss that. She wanted to die now and miss that. And I was like, Lord, she will survive. She will live. And she lived another two years, got to see the granddaughter born. Uh, I came back two weeks after that. She was still there. The doctors were releasing her. They said they couldn't find any cancer in her body. Um, that she was, um, her whole demeanor changed. She's like, I want to live. I want to see my grandchild. So everything completely changed. Jesus changed it all. Come on. Um, yeah, so cancer stage five. I've seen bones recreated in my own dad. He had his finger cut off when he was smaller in work. And I was just joking with him. He goes, look at my... He always used to do this. Every time you go around, he'll show you how his one's finger shorter. It was this party trick. And then he did it to me the one day. I'm like, in the name of Jesus, finger grow. I grabbed his finger. And his finger started growing. And when I was like, what? <laughs> and now he goes around showing everyone that his finger grows. It's, uh, you know, I was just joking with him, but <laughs> um, and then I've seen bone extractions. People who have a piece of the bone sticking out. I've seen them to be worried about your son, where they just disappeared in the fingers. A little baby who had um, bone sticking out of the foot, or that overgrown or something, prayed and they just disappeared out of it, out of it completely. A black toe completely healed. Black legs I've seen healed. And like, um, what's that stuff called? Gangrene. Gangrene. Similar to gangrene, yeah. I've seen gangrene completely disappear out of people's arms, and they like change in front of my eyes. I've uh, seen uh, blindness healed, as you know. Deafness, there's a video online, I take the mention, you can watch a man getting his healing back. Uh, paralyzed limbs, I've seen people with guns wounds who go to the hospitals all the time. People who get shot in their spines, I've seen them move their legs, pick them up, move them around. Uh, where the doctor said they were going to be paralyzed forever. So the man get out of his bed and start worshipping God, get down to his knees and start worshipping uh, when he goes leaves back and was able to work. So I know God can do that. Um, so I'm just stretching your tent a bit. I'm trying to stretch you a bit and say, you know what, there's more. There's so much more. Uh, the first miracle I saw was herpes heal. It was a hectic one. The lady... Uh, Obviously, didn't deserve to be healed in, my, in anyone's eyes. What she did to get it was not right. It was bad. But in God's eyes, He loved it and He healed it. I didn't know how to pray. My prayer was very wrong. It was, if it's your will, Lord. But inside my heart, I knew that I knew that God could heal it. I just knew it. And He healed it. A Muslim doctor said it was a miracle. Tested her three times to make sure. Uh, the kind of herpes she's had, if she kissed her son, the son would have got it. That's how bad it was. She was completely healed from it. And she gave her life to Jesus. And, yeah, and we're still fighting and backing for her. <laughs> yeah, she's a good lady. Um, yeah, so stretch your, cur your curtains. Stretching your curtains looks like this. If you see someone in a wheelchair today and you want to see people get out of wheelchairs, you're going to have to go pray for that person. That's stretching yourself, right? It's, uh, it's putting yourself at risk. A great reward comes from risk. You have to put yourself at risk to see things. If you want to see Jesus working in your life, you have to risk everything for him. It's going to cost you everything. It's going to cost you your reputation. People are going to call you crazy or mad. That's it. The kingdom is not normal. It's supernatural. It means it's not natural. And it's meant to be supernatural. 
If it wasn't, then why would you, why would you want it? You can get natural for free. And you can get that milk for free. You don't have to buy that cow. But <laughs> let's just look at that. The next part of that scripture is don't hold back. When you pray for people, it doesn't always work straight away. Sometimes you have to fight longer. You have to fight harder. You have to carry on going for it. And as long as you have grace, go for it. Pray as much as you can while you have grace. Uh, with people. If the grace runs out, make a plan to pray for them another time again. Don't stop. And don't hold back in what you're saying. If you pray, believe what you just prayed. Don't change the way you prayed now after you prayed. Don't now think, oh, did I do something wrong? Or did the way I pray wrong? Maybe I need to stop prophesying or maybe I need to hold them upside down by the head. Maybe I need to do something different because I'm doing something wrong. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Ask Him how to pray. And then do that and believe that that was enough. I've seen people healed weeks after I prayed for them when I wasn't even around. They got healed. They were in the Sunday office and they then just popped and it was back in place. And they're like, I got healed. And I'm like, Lord, that's amazing. I wasn't there, which is amazing because they know they're done. You know? Um... So don't hold back. Don't hold back uh, when people tell you it's impossible. Don't hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your steps. To do healing, you have to get in the Word. Faith comes by, by hearing and hearing the Word of God about Jesus, right? You have to get in the Word. Go watch videos of people getting healed. Get yourself saturated in it. It has to. You have to get completely saturated inside of it. So when you're not seeing the breakthrough, you have something that holds you steady, that holds you stable. That's the Word of God, that holds you stable. You, the Word has to become so real for you that anything else is not possible. You know, we will look at somebody who hasn't got a leg and we'll go, that's impossible for that leg to grow back. The Word has to become so much that that not growing back is impossible. That's where we need to be in our walk of God. Right? No. It has to be. You have to build yourself on the rock up in Matthew. I'm not going to read scriptures because there's no time, but Matthew 7, 24 to 27, if you're writing it down, write it down. Build yourself on the rock because if you don't, your house will be blown away. Right? So if you don't have Jesus at the center of everything, and set in your heart, anything in your life will be blown away. You have to build yourself on the rock. The scripture before that is about uh, healing the sick and casting out demons and Jesus never knowing you. The rock is important in your life. If you don't know, you're doing everything that is pointless. Uh, the keys for healing are faith, love, and obedience. Those are the three most important things for everything in this kingdom. You have to have faith. What is faith? It's not healing. It's not faith in faith. It's not about whether you have a good prayer. Faith is believing that God exists. That's all that faith is. There's no other faith that you need for healing than that. And if you want to believe in Jesus, that God exists, spend more time with him. Seek him out. Obedience is doing everything that he says. There's blessing in obedience. Things happen in obedience. If you don't do things that God tells you to do, you're never going to see anything. Your life will never change. It's like Charlie said with the manual. If you don't follow the manual, you're going to live the same life forever. It's just how it is. And love, love is the power. Love is God. God is love. If I'd love, everything is pointless. I can raise the dead. I can speak in tongues. I can walk on water. But if I don't have love, it's all for, for nothing. It's all pointless. So those are important. Yeah. Healing is God's part. Your part is the faith. It's the faith that brings it. Hebrews 11.6 is the, the explanation of what faith is, if you guys are writing it down. Um, yeah, so we're going to end off. I'm going to end off on Isaiah 54, verse 3, which is the second part of Isaiah. It's the reason why we are expanding our tents, why we are expanding everything in our lives. The reason you're doing it is not for you. It's not so that you can see a lot of people, because you can see a lot of things healed. You can see great miracles, but uh, that stuff can't sustain you forever. It's it's lifestyle. It's Jesus. Jesus is the only thing that can sustain you. I've seen great miracles and I've still uh, dwindled in my faith. I've still had times where I'm like, Lord, where are you? Even though I've seen people rise from the dead, it's still, you know, even Paul had that issue. He said he hadn't accomplished what he was hoping for yet. Yeah? So, Isaiah 54, verse 3, it says, For you will spread out to the right and to the left 
Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. We are doing this. We are fighting for great miracles and signs and wonders and for for the kingdom of God to come to this earth for the next generation. You're not fighting for yourself. Uh, I love what, what Maxine said to us. I don't think many people understood it, but I understood it. That your door will be the floor. Your door will be the floor. The door that you open in your life for Christ to have dominion of will be the floor that your children will start on. So if I'm raising the dead and every day I'm bringing another person to the kingdom and, and people are getting raised from the dead every day, when my son starts, he's going to be doing that and then going to another level. Right? So you're fighting for the next generation. You're fighting so that sickness and cancers and all these things don't have place in your next generation. You're fighting so that when somebody gets touched in your family by the devil, you already are at a place where you can kick it back in the teeth and say, no way, it's none of this generation, none of my family. Yeah? We almost lost our relationship to divorce, but we kicked it in the face. So it's not going to be my son's legacy, even though it was my father's legacy. It's not going to be in our place. Alcoholism was my grandfather's side. If you kicked it in the face, it's not going to be my son's legacy. It's not going to continue in his life. Poverty is a big thing in our family. It's not going to be in our generation. My son is going to be wealthy. I'm going to leave him, him an inheritance. Yeah. So I asked some of the boys. I don't know if you told the rest of them. Did you tell the rest of them? You did. You said that. that I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We need some words of knowledge there. It's just me and Kerda because he didn't say I'm an imperial come out of First of all, what I want to do is if you want to see people here, like that's a desire in your heart. One of the biggest lies I keep on hearing is I need to wait for an anointing to drop on me. Like as if as if God's going to send something else than the Holy Spirit. And like the Holy Spirit has already come on you when you gave your life to Jesus. He came into you. You have everything you need inside of you. You just need to release it. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings the gifts because they're His gifts. It's not your gift. Nobody has a gift of healing. What we have is gifts that we give out from the Holy Spirit. They're His gifts. And that gift is for the person you're praying for. The gifts are also not meant for the church. I'm just Sorry, I'm very to fix it later, I'm sure. The gifts are not meant for the church. They're meant for the lost. If you keep on coming to church hoping to get touched again, and it's all about, I want a word, I want a word, I want a word. You're meant to be the word. You have the prophetic gift inside of you. Go give someone a word and you'll get away by your name. Yeah, that is the word. You already got a word. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. That's the word. How much more do you want? <laughs> yeah. So we're going to do, uh, if you want to see that gift ignited in you, if you want to see God using you um, to heal the sick, I want you to stick your hand in here. I got you. It's too late. You had your hand there. <laughs> I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that the Lord gives you opportunities to pray for people. I'm going to pray that He gives you opportunities to ignite the gift inside of yourself. If you want to run the comrades, you're going to have to sign up for it. <laughs> so, Father, I just pray for everybody that has their hands in the air right now, Lord. Father, I thank you that you increase their understanding of the gift of healing in their lives, Lord. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you ignite that gift inside them, Father. I thank you that you give them opportunities on their way home today to pray for the sick, Lord. Uh, and like that little boy on that program, Lord, I pray that they see sick people everywhere they look. I thank you, Father, that you give them compassion to step out and risk everything to pray for them. And Father, I thank you that you'll honor their obedience and show them great and mighty things that you can do because of your Spirit that lives inside of them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Alright, now the next one is, who needs healing today? Anybody need some healing in your body right now? Anything at all? Something that's even generational. If you have generational diabetes, uh, problems with your eyeballs that your grandmother had, give them back to your grandmother and get new ones. Yeah, if you got healing, alright. Everybody have a look around, see people with their hands up. Okay, now everybody that had their hand up to pray for people for healing, I want you to get up and move up to somebody who has their hand up. Yeah. 
Uh, if you want to see somebody healed, you're going to have to pray for somebody to heal. He has a safe space. Everybody is a Christian, so they don't mind. <laughs> Go find someone that needs healing. I don't want you to ask them what it is, okay? Don't ask them what they need healing for, okay? I want you to trust the Holy Spirit that when you pray, it's going to be the right words. Man, I see a lot of people that have their hand up for healing that haven't gone to anyone. Go, even if there's five people, go join. Imagine it was your daughter or your son or your family member. Yeah. Okay, move your chair away so you're forced. As the pastor says. Thanks, Danny. You're such a good job. You're making some good. Right. What I want you to do is pray a very short prayer and then the, when Jesus prayed for the sick, his prayers were very short. He didn't have long prayers. He didn't have to speak to sicknesses. He didn't do any of that stuff. He just said, be healed or your faith has healed you or go. Those were the simple ways that he prayed. Just believe in your heart and declare with your mouth. And say what the word is telling you to say. Jesus yeah. So if you're on the live stream, thank you for watching. I just wanted to clear healing over every single one of your bodies right now. If no, you're no. to put your hand on it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come on every sickness to go in Jesus' name. Um, I had a word of knowledge for um, it's a very it's something that you don't usually say in church, You're right? But I'm gonna say it for erectile dysfunction that was causing you not to have babies. You are unable to, to have children with your wife because of that issue. So if you're watching online or if it's you here in the room, put your hands on your shoulder and I'm going to pray for you. So Father, we just command that disease to leave in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, we thank you that barrenness has no place in the kingdom of God. We declare healing of them right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill them and fix them, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Um, yeah, I think he's already defeated. Uh, nice. He's already defeated. I told the announcer they have one now. Uh, for a right wrist, 